There's sort of a, a chicken and egg phenomenon here where, where I agree it's important to sort of elevate uh, the, the industry of compliance officers in Argentina so that they have experience, seniority, and stature within the company. Uh, on the other hand, if there's this resistance at the management level or at the board to treating those people with the seniority that they deserve, then all of a sudden, you're creating a disincentive for people to remain compliance officers in Argentina. And so one of the things that, that is possible is that you have this generation of compliance officers who are being trained and groomed to be senior leaders within an organization. But if they're not given the appropriate level of compensation or seniority, many of them will just decide to leave. Perhaps they right. go to other jurisdictions, perhaps they go to Brazil, uh, Uruguay, Chile, other places um, where there are more opportunities to be sort of treated as senior compliance officials within an organization. We as lawyers, and I personally, I personally, uh, uh, are, um, I'm part of, you know, uh, group status, task forces, you know, I'm in the board of CIPEC, which is a center for public policy. I'm in the board of the Colegio de Abogados de la Ciudad. I'm also in the uh, International Steering Committee for Corruption, you know, issues at the Band Center, and we certainly are working really hard in order, you know, to make it a priority, a top priority in the mindset of all of us, you know, lawyers. But maybe uh, in that regard, it's a little bit late, and it has to start earlier in our career. Um, I think that might help a lot too. Yes, and, and as you said, Jeff, I think that there are milestones. Uh, certain uh, anti-corruption investigations may shake the market and make people more aware of the risks they are facing. If they don't see clearly what are the real risks they are facing and what the, 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 the issues they should address, I think you lose traction you lose opportunities for advocacy and so on. It was not the same market in compliance in Argentina before and after Los Cuadernos, as we said, and it was not the same in Brazil before and after La Vallato. That's a fact. Uh, I think it's undisputable. And also I think that um, it's pretty new and there's, there's no experience in Argentina with regard to the enforceability of the laws, with regard to, we, we didn't have that many investigations either to show you know mm -hmm. results to our clients because when they will start you know understanding that the responsibilities and contingencies and personal liabilities are you know important and are serious uh, no one is going to doubt that this is you know an important matter and that you have to comply yes there is definitely a learning curve i think that we are at the early stages of the learning curve here in Argentina. Perhaps there are several learning curves superimposed, as I said perhaps earlier. You have the FCPA mindset, mindset and you have the non-FCPA mindset. The FCPA mindset is on par with everything you see in Latin America in general. Everybody is aware of the risks and so on. I think that um, uh, there's no dispute about that. When you feel that you are not subject to uh, a foreign regulation regarding uh, compliance issues, perhaps you tend to be more relaxed about mm -hmm. what could happen since the law is, is fairly recent, it has entered into force in 2018, and there are no cases uh, so far of, uh, in which the law has been applied. But we'll see for the future. We are on, this, on the starting points.